have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host. Hark, the Herald Angels Sing. Hi, I'm Dr. Lowe, host of the Loretta Petit Show, heard here on Elation Radio. Hey, you missed the jingle bells, decking the halls, the great food, fun, and family. Remember that Jesus is still the reason for the season. Hey, friends, on behalf of my family to yours, we wish you love, joy, peace, a safe, and a very Merry Christmas. Hello, hello, 
and welcome tonight to Making Tonight. Last week we were out in ministry, uh, out in the great city of Winfield, Louisiana, where the power of God was meeting us there. And I understand that things continued here and progressed with a pretty heavy conversation. Um, and we want to get into some things tonight, and we really want to bless you with uh, our conversation tonight. Let me put this disclaimer out there first. I never claimed to be a relationship expert. I never claimed to be a know-it-all in relationship. Uh, I don't claim to be a counselor uh, for marriages. However, I do say that because of the things I have been through and gone through, some good things, some not so good things, that I believe that I am in a position that I can share with you, the people of God, and you who are considering or you who are in a marriage, considering getting married, going through a divorce and thinking about remarriage, we want to talk to you and we want to share with you things that we have seen in the Word of God and things we have encountered as well because we believe these are things that will help us. I discovered some time ago that the best teacher, the best teacher, the best teacher, those who can tell you because they've been there. I wish I would have listened to my parents. I wish I would have done everything they would have told me. Some stuff I would have avoided. As a matter of fact, I'll go further than that. There were some spiritual leaders I wish I would have listened to. Some things I wouldn't have endured and went through. But uh, God has put an element of disobedience in us to help develop us to become who he would have us to become. Now, after saying that, I want to put this other disclaimer out there that this conversation, I want you to understand, will be absolutely raw. I do mean we're going to talk about some raw stuff. Amen. So if you can't handle it, uh, then I'm praying for you. But we're going to talk real raw. Secondly, this is going to be real, okay, not something fictitious, not something we saw on Love and Basketball, not something we saw on uh, on Coming to America, not something we saw on uh, Christmas on 42nd Street. No, we, we not, not something with Hugh Grant, not something with Billy D. Williams. No, we're going to talk some real stuff, real life stuff. Most of all, this conversation is relevant. We want you to know that what we share, you will be able to identify with it because oftentimes we are transparent in sharing things that we have encountered and been through. Now, having said that, please do know that I do not do this by myself. Do I have the capability of doing it by myself? I sure do. But I found out many hands make light work. So therefore, God has blessed me with a panel of men and women of God, uh, some preachers, some who aren't, some who are married, some who aren't, some who have been widowed, some who are just simply single on purpose. Uh, we come to share with you so that we can help you along the way if you're willing to receive what we share. So uh, let me start this way and go to the one who I know is the responsible for me having this podcast, that is the producer of my podcast that is none other than the lovely Dr. Timmy Robinson. Dr. Timmy, are you in the house tonight? I am in the building. How are you doing today? How are you? Because I missed you on last week. Happy belated birthday. I pray that you feel a little bit better than you did last year this time because you've gotten a little bit wiser and a little bit um, slower because you're growing. Oh, not slower, but you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Hanging out, hanging with you guys, I have no choice. You know, getting wiser. So, yeah. Absolutely. You don't have the time hanging. When it comes to me, you out of town, you do it for me. Oh, that's not true. You know, I love both you guys. Nope, nope. Matter of fact, you 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 love you love one more than you love two others, but we're gonna leave that alone because no, they know what I'm talking about. That's not true. That's not true. Bring I'm gonna get you I'm gonna beat you guys up when I see you. Tell us anything. Mm-hmm. Tell us anything. All right, let me see. <laughs> My brother from another for him, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing as far as this podcast is concerned. He is the host 
of the Pastor's Corner. He is the pastor of uh, Power to Stand Outreach Ministries, and uh, he is a great global man within his own right. And he's my brother from another mother. I'm talking about the one, the only Bishop Elect Ernest E. Richard Jr. Are you with me this evening, sir? You can't tell me I gave him this big introduction and he's not even here. Lord help me. Yeah, I know, he right? What's going to do with him? What's going to do with him? Yeah, see that? Exactly. I, y'all just kicked me to the curb when you're ready. Let me see if my other big brother from another mother is here. I mean, he's the. Chief Apostle of Volume of the Book Deliverance Ministries International Incorporated. He's the pastor of Morning Star uh, Church. He's uh, well internationally known. Uh, I'm talking about the one, the only. He is a doctor in theology. I'm talking about Apostle Vincent L. Smith. Are you with us tonight, sir? Every man uh-huh. in his heart has a face, and the world can erase his past to see. Take a ride in the sky on a ship by the sky. All your dreams will come true right away. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire was calling me. All right, um, let's get it on, and let's do this thing. Just glad to be here. Lord Jesus, he, he had to go to EWF. EWF, my goodness. Bless you, sir. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Let me see tonight. Uh, I know that they are normally here. Let me see if uh, Reverend Dr. Billy Gabriel is here tonight. Are you here, sir? Billy Gabriel here. Amen. Thank God for you. I figured I would call you because normally you're quiet. So I want to make sure we got a hold of you tonight. I'm here. I believe that they should be here tonight. All y'all here with me. Good evening. We are. Hello. All right. Hello to everyone. Have you here? So grateful to have you here. Now I need to I need to see if I got this other woman of God here. She's the radical one. She's the new one to the pack. Uh, amen. And she's doing a great work in the Lord. She is um, she is the one and the only Apostle uh, Felicia E. Slice. Are you with us tonight, woman of God? Okay, well, I don't hear her. I'm not sure if she's on mute or if she's just not here. Amen. Let me let me just, just check the line. Let me see. Did Pastor uh, Lorene Moore and Deacon Moore make it tonight? Are y'all with me? Okay, well, let me just do one more thing. Are there any other callers who are here that I am not familiar with? Uh, would you yes, there are, yourself? and I'm going to challenge you to a fist fight when I see you. Don't be talking about me and think I can't hear you. Now I'm well, done. you didn't talk when I called? Well, Jay, if the phone was unmuted, I might have said something. <laughs> no, you were not here. Don't put that on me. You uh, were not here when he introduced me. I was here. I heard him when he turned no, around. You, studio, you turned around me, no, you introduced me. No, no. Excuse me. I'm you talking. weren't here. I'm talking. You weren't I'm here. I'm talking. This is Big Brother talking. I was here. When he was asking for me, I got the tail end of what he was saying. I had just no, you up. are not. No, you are not. Okay. You say he you was want. not here. Let me tell you what. You just I came on. You only been on for a minute. It on. says, it says Lord you've been on Jesus. here for a minute. Go yeah, back and check your logs. I no, came on, went I'm off, and came no, back. No, you didn't. I'm going to nope. decide to bet on this. I'm going to beat you up. Yeah, I'm going to get, um. All right. Oh, yeah, we're going to have a fun time next year. Okay. 
I haven't said all of that. Let me say welcome to those of you who are watching from Facebook. We thank God for you joining in. You can tell there's a whole lot of love here between each of us, uh, and we just love like that. Amen. So the Lord bless you all. Listen, um, all right, let us let us do this. Uh, Bishop Elect, uh, Richard, would you lead us in a word of prayer? And we will go from there. Amen. Is he back on mute? Well, yeah, okay, enough said. I'm here now. I'm here now. Oh, Jesus, so stay I'm here and you leave it again. <laughs> no, I'm not going anywhere, but let's go ahead and get started. Oh, my God, my God, my God. The people you placed in my life, I thank you for each and every one of them. God, we bless you for all that you've done and you are doing and continuing to do. Now as we settle down in this portion of the day to just share with those who are listening to us by way of radio, wherever they may be, God, yes, that you would open now our eyes so we may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Use us for thine glory, for thine honor, that we may be able to have all that's needed and or necessary to move forward in the things pertaining to you. We put this service into your charge and care. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Let me do this uh, real quick. Apostle Smith, do me a favor and give me a quick recap of last week, please. Give me a recap of last week. Last week. There you go. Recap. Hallelujah. What happened? Right. Last week we uh, looked at the scripture in Genesis about uh, Jacob, Rachel, Laban, Leah. We looked at those uh, four characters, and we tried at best to express what ha- what why does love go wrong? What happened when love goes wrong? As we looked at quite a few things. On last week, we looked at the the trickery of Job. As a matter of fact, we had another character that popped up in the story just for a little while, uh, the brother Esau. So we, we looked at how Jacob got the birthright. We looked at the what everybody calls the trickery of his mother. But I believe that she remembered the prophecy given to her when they were inside of her, and she moved quick at the right time. And then we talked about how Jacob was such a trickster and how his brother had got upset with him until he had to move from home and go down to his uncle Laban's house. But he didn't know he was tricking, but he didn't didn't know he was getting ready to meet an old trickster. And they went back and forward, working tricks on each other. But the main trick was, was when Jacob saw Rachel. Oh, my Lord, what a fine girl that was. Uh, he saw he saw more than his lips and fingertips. He saw something worth working with, and uh, he fell in love. And, and then uh, on the night he thought he was marrying her, the uncle had tricked him with Leah. And boy, he told him, "You work with me seven more years. I'm gonna give you Rachel." When the seven years come, his uncle tricked him again. And boy, all 20 years, he worked for one more. And the question came up last week, Does he, did he really love her? Well, if you work for one woman for almost two years, you better love her. And I'll tell you how we found out that he did love Rachel because he almost had a conniption when Rachel finally had Joseph, or Joseph as you know him. Amen. 
and things were out of whack, even with the family from way back, right up until that time, there was a problem. And and most of all, I want to say this, that he said it so distinctively. Brother Gabriel said, there's a problem in that home and in any home where you have two parents with their own favorite child. And so we had a great discussion, had a little, little firecracker, eight man came on the phone, and, and we went to a whole other level. But that was our lesson from last week, and, uh, Brother Apostle, and I want to thank you for letting this broke down preacher have your show for a little while. Now, I don't talk to you about that in private now, sir. Don't let me have to bring you before some witnesses with that no more. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for covering for me. We appreciate that. It's good to know that you can uh, have someone to cover the podcast for you and it will still go on. Amen. Um, and, and I trust that you did what I asked you to do, and that's frustrate somebody in the conversation. Amen. Tonight, I want to go back into uh, 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, let's pick up verse number 4, going down to four, uh, 8a. Charity suffer long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunted not itself, is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. The word of God for the people of God. The thing that we began to share a couple of weeks ago before I had to go and minister in another place is rekindling the love. And we have talked a little on this rise that rekindling is to revitalize, resuscitate, or revive, bring back to life again. And then and, and there is, again, something to make clear that you cannot take away from the ingredients of love and still call it love. Because if you do that, then you're actually lying. And the worst thing you can do is lie about love. I think a lot of people have been lied to uh, concerning love, and so therefore many people have become disappointed because what they thought was love really wasn't love. It was just a, a format of a fabricated form of it, and that's the thing we want to get away from. So we begin talking on this wise that uh, – that 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 love really has to be perfected in us. We talked about how it has to be developed in us. That's what makes it really work. And if that's not happening, then it's not becoming what it is meant to be. And I really believe that is something that the Lord wants to do, is he wants us to adapt and adjust to this thing called love so that we walk it out in the way that he would have us to so that it becomes a part, a part of our nature, and it becomes a part of what we represent when we represent him, even in uh, relationships, specifically marriages. The worst thing is to just call love an emotion, because love is more than emotion. It is a supreme, uh, it, is a, it is a supremacy that has to be in the life of those who are, if you will, married. And if you're not going to do it, then you're not going to operate accordingly. So we, we, we talked about uh, flames of love going out. We talked about people who call themselves falling in and then falling out of love. Um, we talked about these things and how they really do not become should be. Now, here's where I want to pick up. We talked about what love is. We found out 
as we read the scripture, love or charity suffereth long, meaning it is uh, patient. It is long-suffering. Um, and, and, and I think this is one of the things that we have yet to learn. To learn. Um, uh, Brother Otis Gabriel said something that has stuck with me. He said that in the, oh, in the uh, in earlier years, marriages stayed together because of active tolerance. And I believe that to be patient, you have to have an adaptive tolerance in your marriage. If there's no adaptive, adaptive not adaptive, but adaptive tolerance, then the slightest thing will give you excuses not to love anymore. And the Lord spoke something to me about a week and a half ago that really uh, captivated my attention. And he said to me that divorce is only an option when your marriage is no longer a priority. The reason a marriage is no longer a, a priority is because there's no more patience from that love. There is no more long suffering. There's no more adaptive tolerance. And so what happens is people become uninterested in trying to work through differences. That's why the leading uh, cause of marital divorce in this day and time is called irreconcilable differences. What it really means is unwilling to get along with you. It really means I'm unwilling to put up with anything you present. I'm unwilling to go through this. I'm unwilling to deal with that. So you talk too much. I don't want to be bothered. You you lie. I don't want to be bothered. Um, you 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 um, committed, if you will, emotional adultery. I don't want to be bothered. Uh, uh, you committed financial idolatry. I don't want to be bothered. There are these things that keeps people in a place where they don't want to be bothered anymore. And so what happens is the love is growing cold and fading out, and that's why people are saying, I've had it. And what we want to do is we want to rekindle that fire. What is it that made you look at her the way you looked at her that made you want to be with her? What is it that made you look at him, and when he asked you to have his hand in marriage, what is it that made you say yes? What was it? Was it the cooking? Was it the smile? Was it the the way they made you feel? Was it the way you walk? What, what is it? We want to rekindle this love. And so we have to understand, again, that love is long-suffering. It is patient. It is not in a rush. It does not. It is, I mean, and, and we're going to get into some things, but we want to really get into this, you know, uh, developing this patience developing this long-suffering, uh, you know, developing this enduring, this heart that says, I can handle whatever you present to me, regardless of what you do or what you have done or what you've been through, because some people need that extra attention. They need that extra care. They need that simple, 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 all right? Uh, anybody want to comment on my opening dissertation? Going once. Going yes. Twice. All right. This is Brother Otis Gabriel. Uh, that was quite a bit uh, that you uh, presented to us, and it was very, very stimulating, uh, each statement. I would like to go back uh, to the earlier portion uh, when you talked about the divorce being an option. And that, uh, that option uh, for a divorce is based on how much an individual is willing to accept from the partner of the, what an individual will consider idiosyncrasies, which means behavior that I do not practice. It's not strange to the person practicing or being uh, accused of these idiosyncrasies because they feel the same thing about the person who is complaining. So how much 
you know, are you going to accept? And since divorce is there, and most of the time when a person opts for a divorce early in the relationship without giving it all that they can, then that was something that was foremost in their mind at the beginning of the marriage. And I have actually Mm -hmm. heard individuals say, if it doesn't work out, we can always get a divorce. Instead of, if things don't work out well at first, we can work it out. Because we have both decided. And we have both committed ourselves before God and all of our friends that we are going to love one another until the end of our days. But because there are so many ways uh, that and so easy, that's another thing about the simplicity. If there is something uh, very easy to obtain and you don't, you uh, the key word you mentioned about tolerance, uh, you don't, and long, that's long suffering. If you don't feel like tolerating it, impatience, you just say, listen, I, I've had enough of that. However, there's one thing about uh, marriage. There are certain things that uh, do exist in a reality form uh, that was called the ear reconcilable differences. Is there some things you're just not going to reconcile? And I can give you some examples of those later on. Um, and then <clears throat> there are there are some things uh, that's going to take place and where the marriage is no longer salvageable. So we don't want to ignore those, but we do want to, I guess, subscribe to what you have read in uh, 1 Corinthians 15. And I will add to that after we get some comments from the other participants on the program. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, so I'm not getting no responses tonight. Okay, well, let's continue, all right? So we understand that it, love has to become uh, long-suffering. It has to be enduring. It has to be something that is willing to take on the challenges that it faces. A love that does not take on challenges is a love that's not worth giving. Let me say that again. A love that does not take on challenges is a word is a love that is not worth giving. I'm discovering every day that love must become a commitment. In order to rekindle the love, you have to be committed to love. Uh, the worst thing you can do is commit to starting something without committing to finishing it, uh, because that's one of the things that people will we as people will do. We'll commit to start it. Oh, this is what I want. This is what I need. This is what I desire. And then when challenges come. Uh, this ain't what I signed up for. I don't want nothing to do with this because we all make that same statement uh, for better, for worse, sickness, health, richer, poorer, as long as we both shall live. That's the things we say, okay? And then when we are hit with challenges, all of a sudden this love starts dwindling down and it dwindles down and there's no more of a passion, no more of a desire. And then all of a sudden we're like, okay, well, why don't we want to be bothered no more? Why? Because you let the love grow cold, and there's now need, a need for it to be rekindled. So we must understand that love is patient. Love is long-suffering. It endures very much. But not only that, we discover that love is kind. This is where we have to uh, really get into what love is. When we speak about love being kind, that relates to our actions. That relates to what we put in to our marriage. If you're not going to have kind gestures, 
I'm not just talking about, you know, uh, him taking out the garbage and her washing his socks. That's not what I'm talking about. Some of those things are just naturalized ditties. I mean, and I don't mean no harm, amen, because I believe that if a man is unable to take up the trash, then fine, let him wash the socks and she take up the trash. I don't care, just as long as it gets done. Uh, but, but, but it's about kind deeds. What do I mean by kind deeds? Because love is kind. Okay, well, if you're going to drive one another's car, make sure you put gas in it. If you're going to drive one another's car, make sure you wash it, you clean it out. Don't put all, the, don't put all your junk and stuff in there. Why? Because love is kind. It is a demonstration of how I really feel. So it ain't no hard. It is not hard for me to just bring you some flowers. I can also bring you some uh, some food when I go get something. I can bring you some candy. I can bring you something to drink. It's love is kind. It is described by the things that it do. Come on, talk to me, Apostle Smith. I think you're on to something there because that is my number one thing. That love is what love is. And if you are just slapping your lips because you have a bear, then they're not going to uh, uh, respect what you call love because, and, and, and let me say this, to some of the sisters, if, if you can have somebody say, I love you all day long. But if he don't never do anything or she never does anything that culminates with that speech, then you ain't got too much trust and believe in it. Because they're just, they're just happy in it. There, there's no truth to it. No sign to it. They just keep saying it. So certain things can happen. They go, you gonna go crazy. Oh, he said he loved me. But you don't have no flowers. He ain't never ran your bath. He ain't put no rose petals in it. He ain't done nothing, but he loves you. So I think mm-hmm. your statement is very true. Thank you. Amen. I understand. Oh. I understand tonight that I, I understand tonight that Pastor Loreen Moore is here with us. Woman of God, have you joined in? Yes, sir. Oh, the Lord bless you, Mom. I'm so glad to have you tonight. Amen. Uh, Dr. Kimmy, let's give this woman of God a hand. She is down in Florida. She's a great pastor, and she is also the mother of Apostle Flight, and she's joining us tonight. Amen. So, Mom, when you hear me, and I you have to, excuse me, I have a habit of calling you Mom, uh, uh, Pastor Moore, when you hear this, that love is kind, uh, what do you think about that? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it, it's okay. I'm not offended if you call me Loreen. I, I'm good, I'm Mom. I'm good. Um, I was just talking to Deacon Moore while um, Chief Apostle was speaking, and I said, to me, love is like, do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. So if we're in this thing together, love is what love does. You can't tell me you love me, okay, all day or a couple of times, and you don't do anything to show me. Not that you have to pay me or prime me, but show me that you love me by Okay, take out the trash. It's full. I shouldn't have to say that or the sock thing. But as you had said earlier uh, about that reconciliation, you know, the, how people get divorced with, with that right there. And it's so easy because mm-hmm. some stuff I had already made up my mind to. I'm not going to tolerate whatever it was. And keep reminding you of it because that bugs me. So it's like you didn't care. Okay, I don't care. So we don't care. Okay, you go your way, I go my way. So and I understand that marriage didn't come with a with a book, just like raising children didn't come with a book. Mm-hmm. And what works for you may not work for me, but we do have to work the marriage. Both parties, husband and wife 
have to work it to have something, to be something, you know, and to help each other because we're in it together. It takes work. That's my piece. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much. I thought I heard Apostle Flight want ready to say something. Come on, Apostle Flight. <laughs> well, I think um, Dr. Moore and Apostle Smith have said, hey, <laughs> faith without works is dead. Put in your time. So if you love me, prove it. If you love me, show me. If you love me, don't just say it. I need to see it. And it's not, you know, it's not all about the materialistic things. It's, it's again, um, I think um, Brother Gabriel said it's the kind gestures. It's the, you know, those text messages. Hey, I was just thinking about you. You know, things of that nature. Stop, you know, it's it's an action word. Love is an action word. Let's put some action to it. Put some action to it. All right. Uh, Dr. Kimmy, what are you thinking? I want to hear your thoughts. Take yourself off of mute. Let me hear your thoughts. Come on, Dr. Kimmy. You said you're in the building. Well, I really believe that love is a thought, and it's to be consistent. Um, when you are in a marriage, it's just like um, Mom said. I shouldn't have to tell you take out the trash, or I shouldn't have to remind you like 10 years later that it's my birthday. You should want to know my birthday. Um, I really believe that when you truly love someone and it, it's out of compassion, you want to do more. And so... Uh, I really think a lot of marriages, when they um, get together, I can't say all, they stop dating each other. It's supposed to get better with time. That's why I love, like, the couple on on the podcast. They all, the, the Gabriels, they're always, like, talk about how they date and spend time together. That should be continually. That should be, like, better. It shouldn't get less. It should be more intense. So I think a lot of people think when they get that person, um, they tend to forget how they got that person, and they stop because it should be like why better with time. So that would be my input. Okay. Uh, let me see. Um, uh, 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 Bishop Elect, I want to I want to present this question to both you and to uh, Reverend Doctor uh, Billy Gabriel. Uh, either one of you can answer this. For me, how do you be kind to someone who is not kind in a marriage? Because sometimes that is the issue. And there's somebody who's listening right now. I want to be kind, but how do I be kind? Because she's not kind to me or he's not kind to me. So how do you be kind to someone who is not kind in a marriage? I'm going to let Dr. Billy start off uh, and share share what's on his mind. Okay. And I have been listening on that. Thank you, Doc. Thank you so much. And that very first verse, it tells us that, and it has been brought up just a little earlier, I can tell my wife, I can speak of love. I love you over and over and over. But if it's not from the heart, it don't mean anything. Love, in this case, I would just make it a verse. It's, it's action. It comes deep from the heart, and that in that heart, that's a, it has it comes with kindness and concern for the person. And if I can just, as I said, even though I speak of the, those tongues of love, it, it, and it don't really mean it just sounds like a how to say a brass and tinkling cymbals. It don't mean in it. It just words. It's almost like how could I say? It? It's just like some of us, let's say. Almost like having springtime, we don't have enough flowers. It's it just a, a fire without any type of heat. That that when you talk about love, it has to be warm. It has to be endearing. And, and I, as I just said, it feels like springtime without flowers, or sunshine without brightness. It's dull, and it does not mean anything. And then the person who's who is receiving that can actually feel that because it is not. It's not warming her or him up. 
is not making them feel good. It's just like, as the Bible says, it's just a sound of tingling symbols and just making noise and signifying nothing. Oh, that kind of reminds me of, of that little poem. Just a, out, out down uh, Brockton, it's a sound of fury and things signifying nothing. They love those words of love. If it's not kind, if it's not patient, and if it's not from the heart, it means nothing to the, to the one that we just directed to. I think I hold up on that little bit right there. And that's the way I see that right now. It's, it's from the mind and the heart, from deep within. And that's my part of that right now. Amen. Bishop All Lord. right. Well, I'm not going to add too, too much more to it. Uh, real love reflects the character, the attributes, and the very nature of God himself. We often talk about what is love. You've heard me say it 10,000 times. Love really is the desire to give at one's own expense simply because it's the desire of love to give. And when you are walking in love with the one that you say that you love, you're willing to do whatever it takes to see their happiness, to see their satisfaction. In other words, long story short, if you're going to walk in love in marriage, get ready to be in a servant leader position. That's for the men. For the women, you can be receptive, but at the same time, you can, and there are ways for you to give back. It's not about you. You're going to be the queen anyway. Don't act like a pompous or a pious or an arrogant queen because that's when you're going to pull that man out of his character. No man wants to sacrifice himself and be played for the fool. No man. No woman for that matter. Mm -hmm. Let me stop right there for now. Okay. Okay. So let me see if we can do this. Let, let's see if we can figure out to help somebody along the way. Let's 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 share an attitude of kindness. Help somebody, let's help somebody. Let, they they okay. They 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 they're wanting to do better. They're wanting to make their marriage better, right? There and 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 the woman can see that the marriage is on the rocks. She's already on edge because she feels like she's walking on eggshells. But he, on the other hand, he's feeling some kind of nerve wreck because. He knows that maybe he said something out the way or he did something out the way, and he doesn't want to push her away because he really loves her, but he don't know how to really show it. So let's, let's help them both out. Somebody give me uh, something of, as an act of kindness from a woman's perspective, and somebody give me an act of kindness uh, from a man's perspective. All right. From a man's perspective, swallow your pride. Stop being haughty. Stop being arrogant. Stop being stupid. Yeah, I said it. Stop being stupid. Because sometimes you fuss and fight over the dumbest things in the world. There's really no rhyme or reason to why you're at each other's throat. Mm -hmm. And rather than, see, here's the thing, and I, you, you, somebody said it already earlier. What did you do to get that woman? And why have you abandoned that game plan? It's like a football coach. If running up the middle is going to get you the yardage you need to score a touchdown, wouldn't you do it until you can no longer do it? And then when you can no longer do that, you'll find another means. The bottom line is, brothers, it's our responsibility and our job because we're the ones that's making the investment. We're the ones that's supposed to be the head. We're the ones who are God is holding responsible for the family. Get on your job. Get off your high horse. Stop acting like a little you-know-what, and let's get this party started. It, I, 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 okay. like, I, I, <laughs> I also like to say the part about kindness, like it suffers long and an act of kindness. And it go along with what I just said just a little earlier about the verbal expectations of love without action. How about uh, like during Valentine's Day, for that example, I know it comes once a year, but all the time we have our wives, our spouses, all the time. Why can't we use some of that same type of kindness on Valentine's Day, like bringing flowers, bringing, showing 
bringing candor, a just inner act of love, act of candor. Why is it just just verbalizing it without that type of action, without coming out surprising her with gifts and kind words of, uh, and I think he just mentioned about the myths. A lot of us are afraid to swallow our pride. We we are, we are what's that word? Macho. We don't like to express that type of thing. But I know that comes from all too often the breeding. Some of us have not been shown how to love, how to be kind. I do understand that. But when we, once you are grown and you have come and experienced love by watching, just by living, you have seen acts of kindness. And I and that and I I have a little cliche. I see it quite often as a as a regard to to pride. Swallowing your pride will not give you indigestion. It you will not. about that? It, uh, so if you would just rise up and try to show acts of kindness, bring the flower, bring not just flowers, in the act of kindness, let you know that you appreciate her, knowing, showing that it's coming from the heart, that you really mean it, and you're not just verbalizing it. That is, that is, that's a positive side of our kindness. That's it, it, it just it, it it goes on and on, and, and I just mentioned that. during that time before you get her, we we jump to loops, we do tricks, we brought flowers, we did everything we could to to uh, uh, get her attention, and once we set that trap of uh, attraction, and she fell for it, and now you are together, and all of a sudden. Somehow you do not feel it's necessary to continue to show that type of attention or uh, love or things like that. We take it for granted that everything is okay now. I don't have to bring you flowers. I don't have to surprise you with gifts. I don't have to tell you how much I love you. I don't have to buy you new dresses. I don't have to take you to the movies anymore. I don't have to have these date nights now. Oh, and all that stuff, it gets old. It gets old and redundant. And as a result of that, that is when and where I believe that the, that love dies. It, it, it not really dies, it just it has not been cultivated. Yeah, that's what I would use. It has not been cultivated. And it has to keep going to in order to keep that what that keep that fire burning. And I think I'll stop there for a minute or two. It's, a, it's quite a bit more. All right, I would like to Let comment me... on also, Whitlow, this, 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 and you mentioned about the, I always go back to your original uh, question about uh, kindness, and now, you know, and they've said it is about the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate, mm-hmm. and I would like to transfer that into action, and everyone has their own way of pleasing their significant other. So I just know what works for a man. And uh, one thing that Mm -hmm. I always think about is what we mention a lot uh, in our discussions, and that is called unconditional love, meaning that I'm going to love you regardless of what you do. And it seems as if my wife... uh, has the same mantra because she just loves me. And I know I do crazy things, but she never does complain about it uh, because we are very, very different. And now when we transfer that uh, kindness, what I do, and my my wife and I just give a, a real example. This is Saturday evening. My wife washes her hair in the shower every Saturday evening. She comes back out, his towel dry, I get to blow dry it. And I blow dry her hair, she combs it every Saturday evening. Then, after we blow dry it, you've never heard of this, but there's something called you oiling the hair. You make a little line down the head and you put some grease and you line it, you put grease in a little line. Then you oil her. You move it over, and you put that in there. 
it used to be called grease. Now it's called oil. And and oil I have. And we spend a lot of time pampering one another. The military doctors have given me some eye drops to keep my eyes healthy. So, and that was about three years ago. And so far, I have never put an eye drop in my eye. My wife does it every single time. And after she puts the eye drop in, there's one that stings the eye. So what she does while it's stinging, and I guess to take away the pain, she hugs me around the head while I'm sitting in the chair. Sometimes I can hardly breathe, but I don't complain about it. And and that is, now these are things that happen every single day. And she was washing the dishes after dinner, and she got a phone call, and she went to talk on the phone, but we were watching TV and all, and when she came back from the phone call, the dishes were washed. And she looked at me and looked at the sink, and she came over and rewarded me with a kiss. And that is something that we do every day. We pamper one another. I give my wife a compliment because I truly, truly mean it. And we were going out shopping today, and she had on a sweater. And I said, baby, I don't know if that sweater is going to be enough to keep you warm. So she looked at it, walked out of the room, came back, and now she had on a turtleneck and the sweater on top of it because she knows that I care about her and I always have her best interest at heart and she the same thing with me. And so that is just today what I call acts of kindness reciprocated. So if you're talking about action, you have to have action, and that's our action up to now. We're not finished yet. Okay. Let me hear from the ladies. I heard from three great men. I want to hear from the ladies. Come on, women. Talk to us. Tell us men. Uh, well, talk to us about ladies' uh, 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 acts of kindness, What you know, especially to somebody who may be unkind. Thank you so much, gentlemen. That was some good stuff. But come on, ladies. I want to hear from you. So if you want to show your mate acts of kindness, I mean – you can't be petty with it. Don't be, you know, messy with it. You know, if you're out, you're getting something to eat, you know what he likes, bring him home something to eat. You're in the store, you know he likes a certain scent. Okay, I was mean to him earlier. Let me make it up to him by buying him his favorite cologne. Socks, even, ties, you know, something that, that you know, this is, I thought about you. Although, you know, you upset me, you hurt my feelings. But I still thought about you, and and we can move past that. Those are those, those are acts of kindness, and not only listen. Women are the only ones that like flowers. It doesn't mean that you mm. twist it if you like flowers. Some men like flowers. You talking about the flowers that goes on chicken? <laughs> that, the, hey, flowers, I can look, not flowers. I can fly, no, no, he was being <laughs> But I can, um, you know, hey, and then later on, I can go get that nice piece of lingerie that you, you know, you've been wanting me to put on for a long time. Okay, when you walk through the door, bam. Merry Christmas, Happy Father's Day, and Happy Birthday. Amen. Only two times a year men get kind of, wow. <laughs> no, okay, oh, yeah, you, 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 you can get it every day, however. You know, you said act some times. You had to upset me earlier now. Okay, I have one. Usually when I go to the store or I'm out and um, Deacon Moore is at home, I'll bring, and now he loves Pepsi. I'll bring him back a large Pepsi or a personal Pepsi. And he'll look at me as if I've given him the world on a platter or something. I, I didn't know you, you'd do this for me. Why not? I mean, act of kindness. Okay, when he's supposed to do something, he didn't do it, I'll do it, and then he'll like, 
it'd be like the gentleman talked early when her when his wife had the phone call and he finished the dishes. I'll do for him and he was like, I was gonna do that. Well it's done. You know, and it's how you think about the uh, the problem issue situation. It's not always how you feel about it because our emotions can get us in trouble or get us out of trouble. So, again, do unto others as you will have them to do unto you. A block of gum, a Pepsi, uh, other little things like a possum slice (laughs) bed. That's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's some good stuff. That's some good stuff. And the reason, again, that I asked you all to share that is because there is somebody listening right now. And they're struggling because they want their marriage to work. There are people who genuinely want their marriage to work. And they're trying to figure out where they went wrong. Sometimes you may not be able to determine where you went wrong, but you don't have to stay there. You can start at this moment and work towards making things right. And being being patient and enduring is one thing. But acts of kindness. I have I'm, I'm listening to these things, and I think that that Bishop Elect and 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 and, and Reverend Doctor uh, Gabriel said it well about getting off of that high horse and swallowing that pride and not trying to be so macho. There has to be an element of man that has to have some kind of sensitivity. Uh to be able to appreciate who he has in his life as a wife. Because my mindset is always that she could have done somebody better. She could have she could have done done better, but she settled for you. That that's all that's always my mindset. You know, girl, you say because I say something that it comes I used to say something that would get me in trouble, but I said it. I would tell I would tell her when I was married, the days when I was married, I'd say, you know, girl, I say, you know, you settled for the world's second ugliest man, as good as you look, you didn't have to do that. You could have had anybody you wanted. She said, Yeah, well, it wasn't about the looks, it was just how about how you treated me. Um, you know, and, and, and so things like that make a difference. Good treatment will be remembered, even above something Harsh that you might say and do. Yeah, people can forget. They can for, let me say this way: they can forgive what you say, but they will never forget what you do and how you made them feel. So these are some things that we need to make sure we implement in order to rekindle the love. Even if you deal with someone who's unkind, who's or who is thoughtless. Remember that there are things you can do to cause that flame to come back again. And and you know, and one of the greatest acts of one of the greatest acts of kindness is never going to bed upset with one another. What happened through the day, one of the greatest acts of kindness is never going to bed upset with one another. I've heard um uh, uh brother Gabriel say he said in all the years that my wife and I have been married. We've never gone to bed mad without you know, with, with each other. We've always gone to bed, always telling each other that we love each other. We give each other a kiss. We hug each other or something of that magnitude. But they said they've never gone to bed being upset and mad with each other. And in today's time, anger has become so normal that anger takes precedence and love takes a back seat. And this is the reason we want to rekindle this love because we don't want anger to be the premise of how you go into your next uh, dimension of your marriage. We want it to be the love that God has placed in you for your mate. Uh, That's very crucial. Let me go here because I want to try to finish these things up between this week and next week because uh, two weeks from tonight is Christmas. And three weeks from tonight is New Year's. And with the help of God, we will not be on until 8th of January. So I got to get through some stuff tonight, and I want to be prepared for some stuff in the new year. Now, let me make sure we understand this, that there are some things that we discover about love that it is not. We understand what it is. It is long-suffering. 
It is kind. It's patient, enduring. It is kind. It shows acts of kindness, acts of good deeds, okay? But some things that love is not, and we have about six, excuse me, eight things that love is not, and I want to get through a couple of them tonight. First thing is that love is not envious. Watch this. Watch this. Love is not envious. So when we speak of love not being envious, what we're really saying is that uh, 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 we, we, we do not hold something particularly in our heart when, because our mate is uh, accomplishing great things and we may not be. I want you to understand that. Apostle Smith, I want you to talk to me about that, how love does not envy. Talk to me a little bit, sir. How love does not envy? Yes, sir. I want to say that uh, if you understand about envy, envy is a friend to jealousy and hatred. Mm-hmm. It is second cousin of jealousy and hatred. And if you stay uh, in envy long enough, always got something against what somebody else is doing. Always want to know why this one had to get that. Why did you do that? That is it, going to, be, to, to develop into something greater than envy. Because the longer you stay in envy, it's an invitation for other spirits other parts of the family to come and take a seat in your marriage, in your relationship, in your start up of a relationship. If every time a man walks up to your friend, your wife, and say hello, now I knew something was going on. Well, mm. you do losing your mind. If it makes you act crazy. It makes you do stuff that you have no business acting that way. You got to watch yourself. As the rapper said years ago, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Amen. Amen. He said, he said, you got to check yourself before you wreck yourself because envy will create other issues. Envy will create other issues. And and so you should never uh, 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 be envious of your mate. You, you should never. They got a promotion. Okay. Well, I've been working at the company longer than them. How come they got a promotion? Uh, I, I always wanted that car, and he, he got it before me. That's not right. Love does not envy. It is not envious. Uh, Bishop Elect, listen at me. The Bible says that love is not proud, meaning it does not parade itself. Will you talk to me on that, sir? Well, I mean, self-explanatory, but to take it a little further, love doesn't have, look at me, I'm bigger than you, I'm better than you, I'm greater than you. It does not have the mentality that my poop don't stink and yours does. It doesn't have (laughs) the haughtiness or the arrogance that goes along with that. And you can always tell when any couple, when the man, now I'm going to show you something. Here's how you know you're dealing with a person full of pride. You're coming in, let's take a, we're going into a party or you're going into a function. There are what we would call dignitaries or people of some type of prominence or importance. They're in the room. You walk in, and because you want everybody to recognize you, you go, you run, shake the mayor's hand, the governor's hand, the president's hand. Now, did not two come in that door? Did your wife walk in that door with you? So why are you leaving her back there, eight rows back? She don't know nobody. 
you know, doesn't really care for the atmosphere to begin with, but you dragged her there just so you could show how important you are, you know? It mm-hmm. does not, it, 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 it's not prideful. <sighs> Love in and of itself, stop that. Love in and of itself is not under any situation or circumstance going to show or show you up and prove you to be less in your mind than that person really is. Love just doesn't do that. The Bible says pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And it's crystal clear in what it's saying. If you're full of pride, you are headed for destruction. If you're arrogant or haughty, it's a gun. Now, I will say this. Oh, good, Noah. Thank you for reminding me about this. All that you forgot when you were humble on your way up to where you are, it'll come back to your remembrance while you're tumbling down. End of story. Amen. Amen. That's some good stuff. That's some good stuff. Uh, listen, uh, Pastor Moore, the Bible tells us that love is not uh, arrogant. It's, it's not arrogant. So I want you to talk to somebody uh, from the thought that it is not puffed up. Pastor Moore, are you still here? Uh oh. Okay, well, Apostle Flight, come on, step in for me, right there. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So my phone did something. Okay. You want to go ahead? Okay. Right. No, come you on. You got it, Doctor Moore. Go ahead. Talk Let the people have it. <laughs> okay, so now listen. All all that we're talking about is is so good. I put my my fog down. I left my knife in the drawer, and I'm licking the plate. I'm building on what I already knew, okay? And it's refreshing, and it's good. But I don't like it when I feel that that you, you okay, you, you're better than me or you want to be seen and heard. We talk, kind of talked about this, um, uh, my daughter and I, about being asked up or being asked down. Which, which which one do you want? Okay, so it's up to you. But to be right prideful, then. no, I, I I don't like it. It makes me nervous because it's it's like you just you just have to be seen and you have to be heard. No, that's not the way you do that. Don't don't do that. Because it's embarrassing. You're embarrassing me and you're embarrassing yourself. So mm-hmm. I don't like that kind of thing. And the other thing is I still say, it, it still takes two. It takes two to argue. It takes two to tangle. It takes two, you know, me and you, you know, all that right there. But it's, it's something that we have to learn if we are pay if we pay attention to other people, other couples, read good books, um, be led by the spirit of God. And and Amen. it's just uh, now that's hard right now. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh uh Brother Gay, Brother Otis, this one is just up your alley. This one is up your alley. The Bible says that love is not rude. In other words, does not behave itself unseemly. Now, I know that's right up your alley. Talk to us, sir. Uh, 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 you told the oldest game. I like I, I'm talking to brother, brother Otis. That's right up his alley. Yes, I'm here now. That was a term you used that said love is not. What, what was unseemly. that? Unseemly. It doesn't behave itself unseemly. It's not rude. 
Oh, goodness. You got that right. No, that uh, we must be as a man. This is from my personal point of view, that all of the self-importance, the arrogance, uh, the machoism, is I have to put that on the back burner when I begin to deal and interact with my wife. My interaction with my wife is different from anyone else because she is different uh, to me. We, we have an entirely uh, different form of relationship than I do with anyone else in the world. And so I, when I interact with her, everything is different. And uh, like I, my, my brother tell me I talk too loud because people in public look, look at us when we're at a restaurant. But when I talk to my wife, you, you will not hear this voice. It, uh, it, it, it changes. I take all the bass out of it. I put a smile to it. And I make it soft. And I say things to her. Another thing, too, about that I like that I like to practice is how often do we say things to our significant others that just to make them laugh? And they do, and you enjoy a laugh together. And if we have not, don't have that, then it's time to start taking a look at it because there's nothing worse that I've seen couples talk to one another, and as soon as they turn toward one another, they have a frowny face. Say, come on, don't talk to your spouse with squinted eyes and frowny face. That's supposed to be your best look for me when I'm talking to my first lady. Is I want her to be pleased with everything that I say, and I do mean everything, I don't ever intentionally say anything to my wife that is going to cause her any form of discomfort. But because of my fallacies, and I, I know I don't really say the right thing all the time, but I, whatever it is, if it does happen, it is totally unintentional because of our different set of of our basic and generic values. You know, we all are different, and I respect that. So mine is I'm going to treat my wife with the ultimate and the most of respect and dignity and kindness every time we interact. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Uh, Apostle Flight, uh the Bible says that Love does not seek its own. Will you talk to me about that? What does that mean to you? Love does not seek its own. I'm spreading my love to my lady. Um, you know, sometimes we want to be selfish with ourselves. But... Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna behave because um, you know people die that they never died before. Um, no, she didn't. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna um we're gonna give some love. We're gonna you know not not holding on to uh to what you said, what you did. Um, I'm gonna forgive you, but I'm going to you know I ain't gonna be selfish. I'm gonna be nice. Is that okay? If I be nice. So no. that's what it means when it says she gets on, you just gonna yes. be nice. Yes, please. Yeah, I'm gonna be nice. I mean, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna do better. I'll, I'll do better with my being nice. Okay. I'm gonna be nice. So you're not seeking your own. So what now? So I'm you're not seeking your own. No, because I'm not. No, I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for we. For us. Okay. For we us. It's not. I mean, it's not. It's not a. It's not a one-way street. It's well. It can be. Um, but it's you know, well, me and you, you and me. I'm being nice. Okay. Okay. 
Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, uh, Reverend, Reverend uh, Dr. Billy, the Bible okay. says that love is not easily provoked. That is correct. Talk to us about that. Well, that Talk that, to me about that. You know, that, that is so, so true. It does not, we talk about, you, this is where patients come in and we, where we have to hold out. We have to hold out. We have to be, have to have a temperance, a control. That's what not easily provoked. You're going to have a bad temper. And being, it's just the, that is the advice of a of virtue. It's just the opposite of it. And, and I have to, I just confess, uh, this thing, all these, these are, in this areas, I have um, I was I have flunked, flunked, failed all of these. I put it back in retrospect. The one right here, I easily could I can remember there were certain times during the time of my marriage. There were some things that that irritated me, and, and my expressive anger came up, and that and that was part, as I know now that the. Uh, Deterioration of my of my uh, my love affair, leading up to the position that I'm in now, uh, the divorce, and that 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 that, that needs that negated kindness, that negated tenderness, that negated all the other things that I previously had professed during that time. That I was trying to get her the kindness way, the tender heartedness with her way. Be easily provoked, and I, and my temper was out of control, and which means the, the virtue of that love affair was was failing. And that is for that. That's what it means to me. We have to be tender-hearted, loving, and kind. And then, of course, it surprises uh, patience as well. That is that is my take on that. It, it's not easily provoked. You, 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 you have to. Uh, not being ready. We have to learn how to control your temper. And we've talked about this, such as little things such as they see, the toilet seat being left up, and little things like that. Little things that uh, bring up um, a temper flaring. And when you look back at it, it, doesn't, it don't mean a hill of beans. Nothing. And that, and that, when you do that, it chips away the tenderness. It chips away the kind feelings. It chips away and makes a person afraid to, not not afraid, but reluctant to even make a conversation because we are all the time afraid that temples will flare. So what we do, we just resign ourselves to reading a newspaper or watching TV in order to keep from doing that. And that, and that should not be. Mm -hmm. All right. I want to thank all of you tonight uh, for sharing your input. Somebody's listening and somebody's getting the picture that they could make their marriage work. And for somebody, there is a fire that's starting to burn again. It might be a little small fire, but it's starting to burn because somebody wants to save their marriage. I'm going to go... I'm going to try to conclude this next week, but for tonight, I want to say thank you. I really believe that between all of these great minds here, all of the great wisdom, all of the great experience, and all of the, 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 the grace of God that has been poured out has really been helpful to somebody. And I honor each and every one of you for what you have shared tonight. All right? We've got a couple of moments before we go off the air. So this is what I want to do. I want to hear closing remarks tonight on what we've talked about to you. And I want you to make it simplistic. I want to, I want to give you each 30 seconds uh, to share your closing thoughts. I want to start with Dr. Kimmy. Uh, then want to go to uh, Brother Otis and his wife. Then want to go to the Brother... Uh, Reverend Dr. Billy, then I want to hear from uh, Dr. Moore, I want to hear from Apostle Flight, then Bishop-elect and Apostle Smith. 
In that order, please. Come on, let's go. Dr. Kimmy, let's go. Take yourself off the mute. Well, the Bible say that these are the greatest three, charity and hope. And charity is the greatest. So without charity, we are nothing. If you don't have love in your heart for anyone, you don't know God. You don't. God doesn't know you. So love must be the factor not only in marriage but in your lifestyle. So you must have that love following uh, characteristics as it relates to the Bible because God can't see you if you have no love. And so that is my quote. Amen. All right, this is Brother Otis. One of the greatest joys of my life is bringing joy to my wife. Every day I wake up and just think about things that I can do uh, that would please her uh, and to make her smile, and I make sure that every day is filled with compliments, love, and plenty of physical affection. And at, to this point, today and yesterday and tomorrow is my best life ever. And, and this is Amen. Billy. Uh, and that's a little, so if I could, if I could just turn back the hands of time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All these things that are outlined here about behaving unseemly. Behaving and females that did not sing his own, not easily provoke, they could not even. All these things, if I had known, if I could stand back, I would be to be consistent with my brother every Sunday to see who is loving each other, loving their wife the best. That's man. If I could just turn back the head. Amen. Amen. Dr. Moore? Uh, <laughs> what was man? Was that uh, showing showing love? Mm. Is that what man was? No, no, yes. just your final thoughts. On both oh, marriage. okay, okay. You know, um, the whole conversation with the men, I am lit up like a Christmas tree because a lot of times men do not express themselves, and for the um. The pastor that says what he do for his wife daily. Ooh, I am jealous. I'm jealous. But hey, that's real good. But I, I wish that that men, and even though um, Digger Moore is sitting here, he know he's dropped the ball a couple of times, but he's still learning. And sometimes when he brings stuff home to me, he said, "Well, one of you, you do it for me. Why can't I do it for you?" And that's good. Learn, learn what makes. Me happy, and I learn what makes him happy and happier. So it has to be a balance, but it's it's a give and take, and we have to remember that. Hey, we have feelings, you have feelings, we have needs, y'all have needs. That's me. I'm out. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Come on, Apostle Flight. <laughs> Man, please remember to express your love towards your mate. Not just by words, but by action. Put away your pride. Swallow your pride. Do something that you've never done before. In order for you to go to the bank and have a withdrawal, you all, you have to put something in. And just walk up to the bank tell and tell her that you want to withdraw as you haven't made a deposit. So again, be kind. Be lovable. Don't be selfish. All right. Bishop Elect. Well, with all that's been said and all that's been heard, the only thing I have left to say is simply this. It's never too late. As long as there's breath in your body, you can start all over. Go back to the days it took you to go after her. Remember them sweet little nothing you used to whisper in her ear, the candy you brought her, the flowers you brought her, the walks in the park, just sitting there, sometimes not saying a word. Develop intimacy, and you will fall in love. And I'm stealing somebody's scene tonight. Go with God, and he will, and he will. That's all I'm saying. Apostle Smith, come on. Let me get your closing remarks. 
your closing statement. I think you, you, my closing statement is, is that go after love. It will come to you. But if you damage love, it will run from you. So it's right. better to stay in love than to fight with love. Well, thank each and every one of you for sharing your thoughts. There's some good wisdom that is being shared. All right? So let me make this clear. Let me make this clear. Your marriage will be meaningless until you make your mate meaningful. Two words for you. If you get tapped on the shoulder tonight, roll over. If you're single and you feel something tapping you, cold shower. They did. It'll make a difference. They did. Uh, (laughs) Listen, thank you so much for joining us tonight here on Making Marriage Meaningful. We will conclude with this rekindling the love on next Saturday with the help of the Lord. Then remember the two Saturdays after that because of Christmas and New Year, we will not be here. We will return on the 8th of January, 2022. All right? So we love you. We're praying for you. All right? And we want you to have a very meaningful marriage. And as somebody has tried to say it and didn't do it exactly right, remember, go with God. And he will, and he will go with you. Yo. <laughs> Dr. Timmy, do no. you that drop that chat? Love y'all. We say good night, peace. Say good night, everybody. Bye bye. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. about the trees and lights, but it's about joy, friends and family, all gathered together, but I just want to know, they really know. Oh, God, that's so bad. Bad.